All right, all right. Hey, we got the faithful few here in the house today. You brave the bold, cold hail. Was it hailing earlier? It was hailing earlier, right? Yeah, that's what, that's what they said anyway. I don't know if it's true or not, but they, they said they said. So you're the faithful few in church today. So give yourself a round of applause, would you? Listen, are you ready for the word today? I need, I need a favor. I don't even probably need the microphone. I'm going to still use it because it's like a crutch for me. I need you to do me a favor today. I need you to shout me down, right? I need you some amens. Amen. I need some hallelujahs. I need you to elbow your neighbor for me. Wake them up. Make sure that they're alive and living. Let's practice. On the count of three, say whatever you want. One, two, three. Amen. 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 All right. Hey, oh, if you got a Bible open to the Gospel of Matthew. We're kicking off a Christmas series, Christmas at the Grid. I'm going to bring to you a different Christmas talk every single week. Now, here's the thing. The thing with Christmas is that the story never changes, right? Like Jesus is always born to the Virgin Mary in a stable. Like I, I can't change the story, but I'm going to do my best to bring creativity week in and week out. I'm going to do my best to come from different passages of Scripture that aren't necessarily per se Christmas stories. I guarantee today... I don't know, like, I'd be curious how many of you have actually read the verses we're going to read today as part of the Christmas story. We're going to read through them. I invite you to read along with me. Now, here's, let me just, let me just clue you in here real quick before we read it. This is going to be some of the most interesting, crazy, ridiculous Christmas verses you have ever read. And I promise you. Not many in the room. If, like, I have never read this to my kids on Christmas morning or even part of the Christmas story, but we're going to do it today. And I'm going to do my best to keep you engaged because it's going to get good and juicy in here. Do you believe that? Amen. Come on, you ready for it? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. All right, let's start reading. Matthew chapter 1, verse number 1. Here we go. It says this, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Get ready. Buckle up, buttercup, here we go. The son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers, and Judah was the father of Perez by, um, and, and Zerah by Tamar. Now, if you could, if you got a Bible, underline or highlight that name, Tamar, if you could. Underline, underline it, highlight it by Tamar. And Perez, the father of Hezron, and Hezron, the father of Ram, Ram, the father of Amminadab, and Amminadab, the father of Nashon. Nashon was the father of Salmon. Salmon, the father of Boaz. Now again, underline by Rahab, if you could. By Rahab, underline, highlight, circle it, whatever you need right there. And, and Boaz, the father of Obed by Ruth. Now underline Ruth, if you could. Highlight Ruth, if you could. And Obed, the father of Jesse. Jesse, the father of David, the king. Now, if you were with us last, last week, you know we read this exact, this exact set of verses in the book of Ruth. Remember that? Like we read this entire genealogy. And it's so crazy to me because in the genealogy, what we see is the unique intrinsic hand of God working through the generations to bring about his, his, his accomplishment, his work, and his plan through the lives of generations. It's really, really awesome. Let's keep on reading. And David was the son of Solomon by the wife of Uriah. Now again, underline that phrase, by the wife of Uriah. And Solomon, the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam, the father of Abijah. Abijah, the father of Asaph. Asaph, the father of Jehoshaphat. Elbow your neighbor, make sure they're still awake. There we go. Jehoshaphat, the father of Joram. Joram, the father of Uzziah. Uzziah to Jotham. Jotham to Ahaz. Ahaz to Hezekiah. Hezekiah, the father of Manasseh. Manasseh to Amos. Amos, the father of Josiah. Josiah to Jeconiah and his brothers at the time at the, of the deportation to Babylon. After the deportation to Jeconiah was the father of Sheatiel. Sheatiel, the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, the father of Abu, Ab, 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 mm -hmm, that's the one, Abiud, and Abiud, the father of Eliakim, Eliakim, the father of Azor, Azor, the father of Zadok, Zadok to Achim, Achim to Eliad, Eliad to Eleazar, Eleazar to Mathen, Mathen to Jacob, Jacob to Joseph, thank God for a name we finally know, and the husband of Mary, who Jesus was born, who is called the Christ. Can I get a hearty amen? Amen. I just tell you, we just read a bunch of names that sound like a bunch of diseases today. Hallelujah in the house. Now, here's the thing. 
I want to talk to you today from this simple thought. It's all in the family. Come on, turn to your neighbor. Say neighbor. neighbor. Come on, turn to get friendly. Say neighbor. neighbor. It's all in the, in the family. Turn to your other neighbor. Say other neighbor. Other neighbor. It is all, all in our family. In our family. Now here's the deal. I got a problem today, ladies and gentlemen. I have a deep, deep problem because when I was in Bible college, I took a course. The course was Biblical Hermeneutics and Homiletics. That's fancy words for how to study the Bible and how to preach the Bible. That's all it is. And in that class, my professor gave me specific instructions. He told me three things, three passages of Scripture you never, ever want to preach from. <laughs> Passage number one was familiar, was like uh, passages that are so unfamiliar to your crowd because you got to spend the whole time, like, you know, the pages in your Bible that are stuck together, you know, like Leviticus. Who reads Leviticus in the devotional time? Nope, I don't. I don't read Leviticus. Unless you go to the Bible, that's a passage you don't want to preach from because you're going to lose your audience. You've got to spend the whole time telling them what's happening. Passage number two was the most familiar passages in Scripture, right? Like the ones where you start reading it and everyone's like, oh gosh, really? David always killed Goliath. Adam and Eve always eat the apple or the fruit, the piece of fruit, right? Like Noah always had an ark. You never read from those passages of Scripture. Passage number three. <laughs> The lists, the genealogies, the, 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 the boring list of names that literally sound like diseases. He said, if you ever preach from the list, you're going to lose your audience. They're going to fall asleep. They're going to check out. They're going to be like, I don't know what this means. I don't know what these names are here for. I don't care about these names at all. But thank God. How many are grateful that your pastor was so defiant he dropped out of that class because there's power in this list, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to show you the power in this list. I dropped out of his class and I took another one because I'm like, that doesn't seem right because I believe there's power in every word in the word of God. I believe there's power in every comma. Every, I believe from the beginning all the way to the maps in the back there's power in the word of God. So today we're going to dive into this list because I believe there is a wonder working power in the mighty name of Jesus. I believe there is wonder working. Listen, if we don't understand this list, can I tell you today, you will never understand Christmas. If you don't understand this list, you'll never know why those shepherds were inundated with an angelic host. In the, if you don't understand this list, you won't understand why we have a Christmas tree. If you don't understand this Christmas tree, if you don't understand the family tree of Jesus, You'll never understand why we have a Christmas tree in the first place. There's power in this list. There's unique, remarkable power in this. I can't skip the list. Now, listen. Let me just kind of set it up this way. This list that we just read. Let's go back, man. Go back to the previous slide. Our previous slide. This list of all these names represented in verses 1 to 17. I kind of view it like, um, like um, the wrap. Like you, you ever received a gift that wasn't wrapped Right, like these verses are the wrapping paper in which Jesus came to us. Now I'm curious, in the room, do we have any professional gift wrappers in the room? Can you just raise your hand? Identify no one? No one's a professional. So we got one perfectionist in the room. Now how many? How many? No, okay, all of all, us. So we got so we got no, so we got three. You're ashamed. You're ashamed of your gift wrapping. Why are you ashamed of your gift wrapping ability? Now, how many of you are more like me and you are like you you're terrible at gift wrapping? My hand is up, it is raised. Right, because that's the whole thing, because you gotta go to all this trouble. Can I just paint for you the picture that happens in my house every single year? Every year. Like, let's go, I go to my wife, I'm like, babe, what would you like for Christmas? And she comes up with her list or tells me what she wants, I'm like, babe, I want a toaster. I'm like, a toaster, yeah, but not just any toaster, I want a toaster with Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, really? What does that do? Well, you can talk to Siri, and in your bed, it can start for you this burnt toast. It's amazing. Go find the toaster with Wi-Fi. So what do I do as a good husband? I go find the toaster with Wi-Fi. And I find, I'm like, I'm looking through the store, and I finally find the toaster. Now, here's the, what I can do. I can take the toaster with Wi-Fi to the people at the department store, and they can wrap the piece of gift for me, right? But I'm going to pay the exact same amount that I paid for the toaster with Wi-Fi. Now, how many know I'm cheap? I'm not going to go have somebody pay for me. So I'm going to take it home, and here's what's going to happen. I'm, this is a literal truth. I'm going to get home. I'm going to try to find the most recent, like, wrapping paper roll. But how many know it's never where you left it because your kids are always using it as lightsabers in the house, and you never have a full roll. So now you got to go buy a full roll. Now you got to go get this full roll of, uh, 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 of like, wrapping paper. you got to unroll it. you got to get it all out. Now you got to go find the tape. The tape, ladies and gentlemen, is never where you left the tape. 
It's never where you left it, right? It's always like, because you got to think back, like, where was I the last time I was wrapping that gift? Where was I? Where was I this time last year when I was trying to wrap that gift? Then you find me, find the tape, what happens? That tape is never pulled out over the thing where you tear it off. It's always stuck. So now you got to scratch it off, right? You got to spend time scratching that tape to get that thing over so you can tear it off. And then finally, you got to go find the scissors. Scissors are never in the scissor drawer, ladies and gentlemen. It's never where you left the scissors. And then you finally get the wrapping paper all together. You finally get it all together. You, you, get, the, the, you get the ribbon thing. You know the ribbon. You know what I'm talking about. Where you get the ribbon, you tie it on, and you, you do the zip thing. You know the thing that makes the twirling thing zip. You know what I'm talking about? Anybody know what I'm talking about in the room? Come on, am I the only one? Right? You get the thing. You're bloody. You're bleeding. You almost cut your thumb off. You get to Christmas morning, and you say, Merry Christmas, babe. And she opens the gift. And she says, how did you know? I'm like, oh my gosh, are you serious? This is, this is what these verses are. These verses are the wrapping paper in which Jesus came to us. We need to meticulously look at these verses. We need, because this shows us the wonder. This shows us the power. This shows us the incredible nature of God represented in the generations of how Jesus came to this earth. And I love the gospel writers because the gospel, each one, like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all have a different way to write and to bring about the good news of Jesus. John, you know John in his gospel, he starts with this deep feel like the word was among us and the word became flesh and the word dwelt. There's like this deep theology. Well, Luke, he's the doctor. And so he goes into great detail, right? Like you ever go to the doctor and you're like, doctor, I got a headache. And he's like, did you have a, did your great, great grandfather have a work on his big toe? Hey, kind of thing. Like great detail of like what Jesus, how Jesus came about Mark. Mark, I love Mark because Mark is ADD. Mark is gangster. He's so gangster. He skips over Christmas. He doesn't, he goes to full grown bearded, blue eyed, blue sass Jesus. This is what Mark does. Well, Matthew, Matthew is writing to a Jewish believing audience. And he's going to spend the entire book convincing the people that Jesus is actually here. Not just Jesus, but the Messiah has actually come to the earth. All the prophecies, the 300 plus prophecies in the Old Testament, Matthew is now going to spend the whole book of Matthew convincing the Jewish. How many know believers are sometimes the most hardest people to convince of the most basic truths? Can I get a witness in the room? It's sometimes the heart that he's going to spend the whole book convincing these believers that the Messiah is here. The Messiah has come through this list. Now, they were obsessed with Moses. The Jewish believers, they were upset. They were like, Moses was the real Jesus. Remember in the, in the Gospels, they go to Jesus like, Moses, he provided manna. He provided water. He did all these amazing things. And Matthew's going to be like, no, 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 Jesus is an even greater Moses. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is here. The Savior has come. The Savior has been born. And it's all represented in the list. It's all represented in the genealogy of Jesus. Remember in the Old Testament, Pharaoh issues an edict to kill all the baby boys in Egypt. But how many know Moses, he survived the genocide miraculously. How many know that Jesus, in the time of Jesus, Herod issued an edict to kill all the baby boys in the land of Jerusalem. But how many know Jesus survived the genocide? How many know in the Old Testament, Moses was hidden in a basket and he was pushed down the Nile River to begin the deliverance of Egypt? How many know that Jesus was quite literally hidden in the womb of the Virgin Mary and quite literally pushed from the birth canal to begin the deliverance of the people of God. How many know in Egypt there was 400 years of slavery before Moses showed up on the scene and said, Pharaoh, you better let my people go. And how many know there was 400 years of prophetic silence before Jesus comes on the scene and says, Satan, you better let my people go. This is powerful. This is remarkable. This is power in the list represented in the generations of Jesus. This is, this, I'm telling you, there's power Amen. in this list. Now, here's the thing. In biblical times, your list, your family genealogy, like who is in your family, represented, like we could say it this way, your history had much to do with your destiny. And in biblical times, your potential, your actual uh, family tree was was like your resume. It was like your account. And I love the fact that Matthew is going to great detail to kind of go through this account. 
Because this is why, I believe this is why Jesus had so much like sovereign swag as he walked to this earth. Because he knew who he was and he knew what he was called to do. He had his identity and he had his assignment. He knew who he was. He knew who, identity, assi identity, and assignment. Like an IA. I don't want to know your IQ score. I want to know your IA score. Do you know who you are? And do you know what God has called you to do on this earth? This is why Jesus had so much anointing, so much power. He knew who he was. He knew who he was called to do, what he was called to do. And I love that there's power in this list. It's all in the family. It's all represented in the family tree of Jesus. I was talking to a, an engaged guy recently. And it just if, if you don't believe me, that it's all in the family. This particular engaged guy, they're going through premarital counseling right now. And they're already experiencing some issues, uh, mainly surrounding the family. And, and he looked at me and he said, and all the married folk in the room are going to get a, a, a great kick out of this. He said, you know, I'm not too worried about it because, you know, the day I say I do, it's just me and her. I'm good. The family, I don't care about the family. I'm not about the family, right? And all the married people are chuckling because how many know the day you say I do, you were saying I do to all the cray cray people that are sitting in that crowd, right? Because it has much, like your family has much to do with shaping the person that you were saying I do, that you're looking in the eyes, you're about to kiss. That family had much to do with shaping the person you are about to marry. It's all in the the family, your family shapes who you are. Now, let's have some fun here. All right, Matthew chapter 1, verse 17. I, I'm cool. I, 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 to be honest with you, I take issue with the list that we just read. I, I have an issue, and I'm going to tell you what my, what my problem with the list is. Look at this. Matthew 1, verse 17 says this. So all the generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations. And then from David to the deportation of, to Babylon, there were 14 generations. And then from the deportation to Babylon to Christ, there were 14 generations. So now, okay, so here we have three sets of 14. Now in school, I excelled in lunch and PE, not math. All right, so we have three, we have 14 times, 14 plus 14 plus 14 equals? 32. What was it? 32. 42, 42, 42, 42 right? Like. 42. Am I right? Am I right? 42. 42. 42. Okay. So we got 40, 42 generations represented here in the life. Uh, now, now here's the thing. Like, I, 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 I did the homework. Like, Luke has a list as well. If you turn to the Gospel of Luke, Luke, he also has a list. But Luke, look at Matthew. He goes all the way back to Abraham. But Luke goes all the way back to to Adam, yeah. representing 77 generations. Now, here's the problem I have. Matthew, this means this, that Matthew, there's some names that Matthew cut off of the list. There are some names that Matthew did not include in the list. And some of you are like, I don't got a problem with that. I wouldn't mind cutting off a family tree branch in my own family. There's some crazy people. I wouldn't mind sharpening out of my, some of you have no problem with that. But in this particular instance, I got a problem. I got a problem because Matthew cut some names off the list. Now, here's what you got to understand. In the list, in biblical antiquity, your list was your resume. Your list was your identity. If someone wanted to see who you were, they were going to scroll through your list. They're going to go through. They're going to say, oh, that's that person's daddy. That person's well together. They're going to scroll through your list. Nothing's changed in our day and age, right? Because we scroll through social media. And what, what do we do? We post the best and we hide the rest. We post the best, we hide the rest. So we're going to scroll through your Instagram. We're going to see, oh my gosh, look at their kids. They're so put together. Oh my goodness, look, their Bible is open to Philippians 4, 13 with a cup of coffee. They love God. They love Jesus. It's amazing. Like you scroll through and this is who, this is, this is what they did. They scroll through the list to find out who that person actually was. But here's my problem. My problem is that the post, the picture that we see doesn't tell the full story. Can I paint a picture for you? On Thanksgiving, I'm going to show you a picture of my family. This is my family on Thanksgiving Day. This is it right here. Now, this was the best we could possibly get on our Thanksgiving Day. Now, here's what we have here. We got my baby girl, Jerrica, who looks like she wants to kill everybody in the picture. We got Jack. He looks like thrilled to me. He's like ready to go. He's like Britannica, ready to go there. And then we got Johnny. I don't know what Johnny's doing. He's looking at his hand. He's not even looking at the camera. He's doing his own thing over here. Britannica and Jack, they look like they're ready to hey, take this picture. I look like I'm forced to be there, but this was the best we could get. How many know? It took bribing. It took kids fighting. It took booger flicking. It took turkey being 
turn of heads for us to get our kids to this wall so that we could take some semblance of a family photo. This picture doesn't tell the full story. If you want to know the full story, you come talk to me. After. I'll tell you the full story of what it took to get this picture. Now, I can tell we need another example here. I want to show you Matthew's, Matthew's post. I want to show you Matthew's picture from his list. Remember, we just read the whole list of, God, of like Jesus' family tree. But I want to show you what Matthew did. He shows you the post. He shows you the picture. And I got here. I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Here's what we have. Here's what we have here. Can, can you see this? We've got the nativity of Jesus represented here. I'm going to bring it kind of to the middle. So we got, we got, we got the animals. We got baby Jesus here in the middle. We, we've got, we, we've, well, we've got four wise men. Is that what we got? This is the wrong. This is. We've got four wise men. I don't know why there's four. There should be three, but we've got four. So he's got gold, frankincense, myrrh, and he also got a tablet on, on Christmas. So we got four wise men. We got Mary, Joseph. We got baby Jesus. This is the post. This is the picture that Matthew, we just read the list. to make it more representative here. We've got Minnie Mouse. She's going to go right here. This is true. I'm not, I'm not making this up. We've got Minnie Mouse. We've got this um, princess. I don't even know what this is. we got another baby doll right here, a, a lady right here. And then we got, then we got a Barbie. we got a Barbie. And this is going to go right here. This is going to go right here in the picture, in the scene. Because, again, this, it doesn't tell the full story. But this, and then we got... And then we got then we got Anna from Frozen. We got Anna right here. She's gonna sit right here behind and kind of look over. She's gonna lay right here. Now this, this is the actual the, what we just read. What we read in the list. This represents the full story because now what we have mentioned in Matthew's list, we've got five women. Remember the people I told you to underline, highlight when we were reading through. We've got five women represented in the in the genealogy and the list. Of Jesus, five women. And these aren't just any women. These are crazy women. These are these are nutsy cuckoo women represented in the genealogy and the bloodline of Jesus Christ. So Matthew's list tells the full story. This is what it actually was. Do you know who these women were? Five of these women. Do you know what five is? Five is the number of grace. Five, this is what grace does. Grace welcomes everybody into the kingdom of God. It does not discriminate against where you've been and what you've done and where you've gone. It doesn't discriminate. It says grace is welcoming to everybody. And this is what Matthew's list does. This is what Matthew's post does. It, it welcomes everybody into the family of God. Do you know who these women were? Do you know who this is right here? It's not Minnie Mouse. This is a lady by the name of Tamar. Tamar represented in the list of Jesus Christ. Do you know who Tamar was? In Genesis 38, we're not going to look at it, but in Genesis 38, Tamar, here's what she did. She had a husband, got divorced. Had another husband, got divorced. Went to her father-in-law and said, father-in-law Judah, I want another husband. Judah says, okay, you can marry another one of my sons. He reneges on the deal. Do you know what Tamar did? This is what Tamar did. She dresses up like a prostitute. And she goes down. This is true. Genesis 38. She goes down to the local brothel where her father-in-law currently frequents. And she has relations with her father-in-law. And just so that she has proof, you know what she does? She keeps his skivvies, his fruit of the looms. She keeps them as evidence that she had relation. I'm not making it up. So when she goes back to the town, they say, let's stone her. Let's kill this woman. And she says, no, no, no. 
no, 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 wait. Now, before you're so angry at me, I've got some something to show you here. And she pulls out the fruit of the looms. And the people say, oh, wait a minute. Aren't those belonging to Judah? Judah comes out and says, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, 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 are, those are mine. She's good. She's good. Let her go. Let her. This is Tamar. This is one of the people represented in the story of Jesus Christ. Do you know who this person is? This is Rahab. Rahab didn't pretend to be a prostitute. Rahab was a prostitute. Remember the story? When the spies go into the land and they're actually like looking around trying to like see if the land was good. And Rahab gave the men of God safety. She gave them refuge from all the people that wanted to kill them. First and foremost, here's what I want to know. I want to know how did these men of God know where the prostitute lived? <laughs> did anybody ever wonder that? Like how did, the, how did the men of God know where the prostitute? I'm going to let pretend again answer all those questions for you. But this is Rahab. She didn't pretend to be a she was a prostitute represented now in the bloodline and the family tree of Jesus Christ. Do you know who this person is? This is Ruth. This is the person we spent the whole month of November talking about Ruth, a pagan from a pagan land, a cursed generation. This is Ruth. God turns it all around because she connects herself to Naomi. She connects herself. How many know there's power when you connect yourself with the right people? There's power when you connect yourself to the people of God. And Ruth says, I'm going to go and I'm going to connect myself to Naomi. And I'm going to be part of the bloodline. And this is Ruth. And do you know who this is? This right here, ladies and gentlemen, if you've noticed in the list, as you're reading through the list, it says this individual, this woman is introduced as the mother of Solomon, the wife of Uriah. Do you know who this is? This is Bathsheba. This is the lady who was, who was, who was bathing on a roof, uh, who, who was bathing naked on a roof. And King David sees Bathsheba bathing on the roof. King David sends her a text message and says, hey, Bathsheba, I saw you bathing on the roof. Do you want to come over tonight, girl? Smiley face. And she comes over. They have relations. She gives birth to a baby named Solomon. And not and, and King David, now ashamed, he says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send a hitman because I know this woman, I know Bathsheba is married. So I'm going to send a hitman to the field, to the battlefield. And I'm going to kill her husband, Uriah. So not only does he commit adultery, he also commits murder. And now this lady, Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, the wife of Uriah, is mentioned in the bloodline of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. This this, do you see what's represented in the bloodline? Do you see what's represented in the list of Jesus Christ? There is murder. There is incest. There is rape. There is conspiracy to commit murder. There is prostitution. All represented in the bloodline of Jesus Christ. And there's a powerful picture being painted in the list. You see, this is why I can't skip the list. This is why all the list, this is why the name, this is why I believe the enemy goes to such great trouble to get you to skip over the list. Because there's power in the list. Because this is what the list is saying to you and saying to me that, it, that God can use anybody. I've got 12 points. You want to have my 12 points today? 12 points. Write them down. 12 points for the 12 days of Christmas. Point number one, God can use anybody. Point number two. God can use anybody. Yeah. Point number three, God can use anybody. Number four, God can use anybody. Number five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So God can use absolutely anybody in the bloodline of Jesus Christ. This is the powerful message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that God can use anybody. Today you're here, and maybe you've believed the lies that the enemy has, has told you for far too long. You're believing the lies that God can't use you. You want to sit there and tell me, no, God can't. I'm too far gone. I've done too much. I've gone too far in this direction. No, no, no. God can use anybody. If God can use Tamar, the person who deceived her father all by prostitution, if God can use Ruth, a Moabite from a pagan land, if God can use the mother of Solomon, the wife of Uriah, if God can use a person, and Mary, let's not forget about Mary, now we got 14 year old virgin Mary, can you imagine, she's 14, she's trying to walk into youth group, she's pregnant with a big old battle, she says, no, 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 it's not what you think, God did this to me, can you imagine the scene, can you imagine that, I, this is this is crazy, all represented in the bloodline of Jesus Christ, I believe that God wants to say to you today that God can use absolutely anybody, there's power in this list because what this list represents is the wonder-working, powerful hand of God who is willing and able to turn it all around in your life. I don't know what you're dealing with today. I don't know what you're facing today, but I want you to notice that there is room in the family of God. This list proves that. This list in a misogynistic, patriarchal society, women were never listed in genealogies, ever. You can read the entire Bible, go to every single list, every single genealogy, you will not find one woman represented name until you come to the bloodline 
of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the God can use anybody. God can use anybody. God can use anybody. God can use absolutely anybody. Any God can use you today. God wants to use you today. God wants to turn it around in your life and use you today. He doesn't want just the post. He doesn't want just the picture. He wants the full story because the full story, some of you today are so embarrassed of the thing that you're trying to hide. And God says, stop being ashamed of the thing you're trying to hide because that's the very platform upon which I want to proclaim my glory to this world. This holiday season, this is what I want to do. I want to turn it around in your life and I want to use you. God used these powerful, wonderful women. God did something unique in their life. God wants to use anybody and everybody. Amen? Amen. Okay, let's pray together.